Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department. This presentation is titled Teens, Young Adults, and Sexually Transmitted Diseases. So what are sexually transmitted diseases, or STDs? They are infections passed through sexual contact. They may be spread through oral sex, anal sex, vaginal sex, skin-to-skin -skin contact, or contact with other bodily fluids, such as fingers or objects that touch fluids or infected sites or sores and then touch another area. It is a myth that you can only get an STD through vaginal intercourse. There are about 20 million new cases of all STDs in the United States each year, and about half of these cases are in those between the ages of 15 to 24. Here are some results from a 2015 high school survey done both in Indiana and in the United States. In Indiana, 41.7% of high schoolers had ever had sexual intercourse compared to 41% in the entire United States. In Indiana, 31.7% of high schoolers had sexual intercourse in a three-month period at the time of survey compared to 30% in the United States. In Indiana, 46.6% of high school students did not use a condom during their last sexual experience, compared to 43% in the United States. In Indiana, only 8.9% of high school students had ever been tested for HIV, compared to 10% in the United States. In Indiana, 8.7% of high school students had at least four lifetime sexual partners, compared to 11.5% in the United States. And in Indiana, 3% of high school students had their first sexual intercourse before age 13, compared to 3.9% in the United States. So why are younger people at greater risk of STDs? They may not feel comfortable discussing protection. They do not always get tested. They may be hesitant to discuss their sex lives with partners, doctors, nurses, or others. Their bodies are biologically more susceptible to STDs. They may not have insurance or transportation for testing, and some have multiple or anonymous sex partners. So how can you protect yourself from STDs? Abstinence is the only 100% protection method. You and your partners should be tested before any sexual contact. Be sure to use the condom the right way every time from start to finish for vaginal, oral, and anal sex, and use a new condom for every sex act. Allow a reservoir tip at the end for semen collection. Remove the condom immediately after, before the penis is soft, making sure not to spill semen. Put on a new condom immediately if one breaks at any point during sexual activity, and ensure there's adequate lubrication. Limit your number of sex partners. Obtain HPV and hepatitis B vaccinations. Always have a long-term mutually monogamous relationship. Avoid drugs and alcohol as you're more likely to take risks or you may have sex with someone you normally would not have sex with and have open communication with your health care provider. So how do you know if you have a sexually transmitted disease? You may or may not have any symptoms at all and you usually cannot tell just by looking at someone. The only way to know is to get tested. You can go to the website findstdtest.org for testing locations. There are approximately 19 million Americans infected with STDs annually, but only about half of them are aware of it. Here are some guidelines for treating sexually transmitted diseases. Not all STDs can be cured, although some do have medications to help with the symptoms. If the STD that you contracted is curable, you should receive treatment as soon as possible. Be sure to take all medication as prescribed, even if you feel better. Otherwise, the medication may not kill the infection and it can be dangerous. Do not have sex again until your treatment is completed or for seven days, whichever is longer. All sex partners should be treated at the same time. Work with your doctor to follow CDC guidelines for treatment and be sure to notify all of your sex partners so that they may be treated as well. Bacterial vaginosis is a condition with a bacterial imbalance in the vagina. It is the most common vaginal infection for women ages 15 to 44. It is not in itself a sexually transmitted disease, but it can result due to sex, as this disrupts the balance of bacteria. It can be caused by a new sex partner, multiple sex partners, or from douching. 
Symptoms include a thin white or gray vaginal discharge, vaginal pain, itching or burning, a strong fish-like odor, burning with urination, or itching around outside the vagina. Ways to lower your risk are not having sex, limiting your number of sex partners, and not douching. It should be treated with antibiotics. Sometimes the infection does clear on its own, and the infection may return, even with treatment. Health risks include an increased chance of contracting or spreading HIV, an increased chance of contracting other STDs, it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease, and complications of infection during pregnancy include that the baby may be more likely to be premature and be more likely to have a low birth weight. Chlamydia can infect both men and women. It is very common. There were over 1 million cases reported to the CDC in 2014. It is spread through sex, and you can still get it if your male partner does not ejaculate. It may also be passed to the baby during childbirth, and this can cause an eye infection or pneumonia in the baby. Symptoms include abnormal vaginal discharge in women, lower abdominal pain in women, pain with sexual intercourse in women, bleeding between periods in women, penile discharge in men, testicle pain and swelling in men, burning with urination, and if it's a rectal infection, you may have rectal pain, rectal discharge, or rectal bleeding, although most have no symptoms at all. It should be treated with antibiotics, and repeat infection is common. You should be retested three months after completion of treatment. Health risks include that it can lead to infertility in both men and women. There are complications of infection during pregnancy, including it can cause an ectopic pregnancy and can cause premature delivery. It can also cause pelvic inflammatory disease and can increase your chance of contracting or spreading HIV. Genital herpes is caused by the herpes simplex virus type 1 and type 2, or HSV1 and HSV2. Type 1 is usually oral, most often infected through non-sexual contact with saliva, such as a fever blister. Type 2 is usually genital, although you can pass herpes from one area to another. It is estimated that there are 776,000 new cases in the United States each year. More than one out of six people ages 14 to 49 in the United States is infected. Genital herpes is spread by contact with a herpes sore, saliva, genital secretions, skin in the oral or genital area, and can be spread even if there is no visible sore. Oral herpes can be spread to the genitals through oral sex. Be sure not to touch sores and then touch another part of your body without washing your hands in between. Not all areas with herpes sores can be covered by a condom, so you should not have any sexual activity when sores or other symptoms are present. Symptoms include blisters around the genitals, rectum, and mouth, and they may break and leave painful sores. You can have itching around the genital area, buttocks, and inner thighs, painful urination from ruptured sores, and you may have flu-like symptoms at first, and you can continue to have outbreaks for the rest of your life. Most people have no symptoms or mild symptoms. There is no cure, but there are antiviral medications that can help with symptoms. They may decrease the chance of spreading the infection and may prevent or shorten outbreaks. Health risks include that it can increase your chance of contracting or spreading HIV as it increases the number of CD4 cells. You can also develop encephalitis, aseptic meningitis, and you can have complications of infection during pregnancy, including that it may lead to miscarriage, it may lead to premature delivery, and can be passed to the baby during pregnancy or delivery as in neonatal herpes. You may take anti-herpes medication and may have a C-section to help decrease the chances. Gonorrhea, also called the clap, can infect both men and women. It is very common, especially in those ages 15 to 24. There were over 350,000 cases reported to the CDC in 2014. It is spread through sexual activity and can also be passed on to the baby during childbirth. Symptoms include burning with urination, white, yellow, or green penile discharge in men, painful or swollen testicles in men, increased vaginal discharge in women, vaginal bleeding between periods in women, lower abdominal pain in women, 
And with a rectal infection, you can have rectal discharge, anal itching, soreness and bleeding, and painful bowel movements. Some people have no symptoms at all. Gonorrhea should be treated with antibiotics, although more strains are becoming drug resistant. If you're still having symptoms after more than a few days of receiving treatment, you should return to your doctor. Health risks include that it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease, it may lead to infertility in both men and women, it can lead to life-threatening infection if the gonorrhea spreads to the blood or joints, and it can increase your chance of contracting or spreading HIV. Hepatitis B is a serious liver disease. It is estimated that anywhere between 850,000 to 2.2 million people in the United States are chronically infected. There are almost 20,000 new infections in the United States in 2014. Hepatitis B is spread through sexual activity and blood and can also be passed on during pregnancy and birth. 90% of infected infants become chronically infected. Symptoms may include jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eyes, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, fever, pale stool, abdominal pain, joint pain, fatigue, and dark urine, although some people have no symptoms at all. Hepatitis B can be prevented with the hepatitis B vaccine. Some are able to clear the virus naturally and others do develop chronic infection. There is no cure, but treatment is available to help slow the progression, although you may need a liver transplant. Health risks include an increase of chance of contracting HIV, liver failure, liver cancer, and in death. Human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. 22% of all new HIV diagnoses in 2015 were in those from 13 to 24 years of age. HIV is spread through sexual activity and blood. It can also be passed on to the baby during pregnancy, birth, or through breast milk. There's a 25% chance of the baby developing HIV if mom does not take any medications. This chance drops to 2% if mom receives medications during pregnancy and the baby receives medications for six weeks after birth, if the baby is formula fed, and possibly if the baby is delivered via C-section. Early symptoms include fever, headache, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, rash, fatigue, diarrhea, weight loss, cough, and shortness of breath. Late stage symptoms include persistent unexplained fatigue, soaking night sweats, shaking chills, fever greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, long-term lymph node swelling, chronic diarrhea, persistent headaches, and unusual opportunistic infections. You're more at risk for developing HIV after getting other STDs as you engage in the same high-risk behaviors and STD sores allow HIV to more easily enter the body. There is no cure for HIV, although antiretroviral therapy does reduce the amount of virus in blood and bodily fluids. You are less likely to, to spread HIV if you are on antiretroviral therapy. Pre-exposure prophylaxis is available for those at very high risk. It is taken daily to prevent those who are HIV negative from becoming HIV positive. Health risks include it makes it harder to fight other illnesses, cancer, and death. Human papillomavirus, or HPV and genital warts, is the most common STD in the United States. There are about 79 million Americans currently infected, with about 14 million new infections each year. Almost all sexually active people will get it in their lifetime. It is spread through sexual activity or skin-to-skin -skin contact with infected areas. Not all areas with genital warts are covered by a condom. Symptoms include genital warts, which may be a small bump or a group of bumps, which may be raised or flat and may be shaped like a cauliflower, or itching or discomfort in the genital area, although many have no symptoms at all. There is a vaccine available for those ages 9 to 26. Genital warts may be treated with prescription medication and some cancers may be treated. Women should be sure to get routine pap tests for early detection. Health risks include that it may cause cancer, with cervical cancer, there are more than 11,000 women in the United States diagnosed each year. It may also cause vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, penile cancer, 
anal cancer, and oropharyngeal cancer. Each year, approximately 17,600 women and 9,300 men are affected by HPV cancers. Pregnant women can also pass HPV to their baby during delivery. Pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID, is a complication of untreated sexually transmitted diseases. Symptoms include fever, burning with urination, lower abdominal pain, bleeding between periods, pain and or bleeding with sex, and unusual vaginal discharge with a bad odor, although some may have no symptoms at all. There is an increased risk if you have an untreated STD, if you're not in a mutually monogamous sexual relationship, if you have a previous history of PID, if you are sexually active and age 25 or younger, if you use a douche, and there's a small increase during the first three weeks of an intrauterine device placement. It should be treated with antibiotics, although this will not reverse damage that is already done. Health risks include scar tissue causing tubal blockage, in which one in eight women with a history will have difficulty becoming pregnant. It can also cause an ectopic pregnancy, infertility, and long-term pelvic or abdominal pain. Pubic lice, or crab lice or crabs, is spread through sexual contact or close personal contact. It may also be found on coarse body hair, such as legs, armpits, mustache, beard, eyebrows, and eyelashes. Symptoms include itching, invisible nits, or crawling lice. There is over-the-counter medication available, and all those who are infested should be treated. You should hot wash and high heat dry bedding and clothing. There were 326 primary and secondary syphilis cases reported in Indiana in 2016. Syphilis may be spread through direct contact with syphilis sores or shankers during sexual activity. It is possible to get syphilis from kissing if there are syphilis sores in the mouth. It may also be passed from mother to unborn baby. Not all areas with syphilis shankers may be covered by condoms. There are four stages with syphilis. The primary stage is the most infectious stage, and with this you may have sores at the site of infection, including the vagina, penis, mouth, or anus. This stage usually lasts three to six weeks. In the secondary stage, there is an infectious skin rash, which may be present on multiple areas of the body. It can look like rough, red, or reddish-brown spots on the palms or bottoms of feet, and it usually does not itch. You may also have mucous membrane lesions, which are sores in the mouth, vagina, and anus. You may also have swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, fever, patchy hair loss, headaches, weight loss, muscle aches, and fatigue. The latent stage is less infectious, and this is when symptoms disappear. In the tertiary stage, this may lead to affecting other body organs, and it may develop 10 to 30 years after the infection began. It can spread to the brain and nervous system, known as neurosyphilis. This is not reversible and may lead to severe headaches, difficulty coordinating muscle movements, paralysis, numbness, and dementia. Syphilis can also spread to the eyes, known as ocular syphilis, and may lead to vision changes and blindness. This can all be fatal. Syphilis should be treated with antibiotics as soon as possible, even if the symptoms go away, and you should be sure to have follow-up testing. Health risks include permanent organ damage, a two to five times greater risk of contracting HIV due to genital sores or death. There may also be complications of infection during pregnancy, including low birth weight of the baby, premature delivery, miscarriage, and up to 40% of babies born to syphilis positive mothers may be stillborn or may die soon after birth, and it can also lead to congenital syphilis. Congenital syphilis is where the infected mother has passed syphilis onto her baby during pregnancy. There recently has been an increase in cases. The baby should be treated with antibiotics as soon as possible, and the doctor may choose to treat the baby without testing if the mother was not treated. Symptoms and health risks include bone deformity, severe anemia, enlarged liver and spleen, jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eyes, brain and nervous problems such as blindness or deafness, meningitis, skin rashes, and seizures. The baby may have no symptoms immediately or they may show up later. 
Trichomoniasis, or TRIC, is the most common curable sexually transmitted disease in the United States. It is estimated that there are 3.7 million people infected, and it is more common in women. It is spread through sexual activity. Symptoms include itching, burning, redness, soreness of the genitals, burning with urination, pain with intercourse, penile discharge in men, or clear, white, yellowish, or greenish, smelly vaginal discharge in women, although only about 30% of people develop symptoms. Trichomoniasis should be treated with antibiotics, and about one in five people are reinfected within three months after treatment. Health risks include an increased risk of contracting or spreading other sexually transmitted diseases and complications of infection during pregnancy, including premature delivery and low birth weight babies. So who should you talk to about sexually transmitted diseases? You should always talk to your sexual partners. You may also talk to a trusted adult, such as a parent, doctor, nurse, or teacher. Don't always trust advice of friends and the internet as you may be given inaccurate information. This concludes the presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact your doctor, local health department, or local STD treatment center. Thank you.